All right, so as you guys know, Vince is my neighbor. He does a lot of pretty well all my welding now because he's an amazing welder. Uh, we're doing a pile of stuff on the tank, and you know, I was thinking maybe we should get him a welding rig. Use one of the trucks maybe to uh, maybe pick up a welder, portable welder, and get him on the road doing custom work. But uh, my trucks are pretty nice. So I got him this sweet van that my wife is not crazy about. And look at this, it's all set up, it's ready to go. Ranger 250, he can do custom work. I know it's not classy pulling up to a job site in a van, but man, nice welder. Here we go. Okay, so seriously though, um, trucks are coming along really nice. I'll probably make some sort of kit there, some sort of stand that we can just boom uh, this welder into the back and do some stuff here and there. Maybe we'll put it in the tank. I don't know, but this was too good of a deal, marketplace deal to pass up. Um, 600 hours on the engine, 630, and the generator works and the engine sounds good. It's just the welder doesn't work. So hopefully it's just one of these breakers. Probably not, but um, we're gonna go take a look at it and kind of fix this up. It's got banged up just on that side. The sheet metal's not perfect. We'll clean that up. Paint's not even that bad. It's not super rusty, so I don't think it's been outside the entire time. Uh, the guy I bought it off of seemed to be more into wood than this. I just got a stellar deal on it. Couldn't pass it up. Had to go get it. He said, either come now or I'm selling it to one of the other 50 guys that responded. So picked it up, kind of, he fired it up, uh, ran a grinder and loaded it up but yeah i really need to get my truck going because this is my poor poor minivan here we go okay super easy i'll just i'll just push it onto the forks oh my god look at that shoulder up against it bend some more tin who needs this truck Honestly. Okay, so the only thing it didn't come with was welding leads, obviously, because those are expensive too. Oh, the polar, nice. Exhaust looks like it's in good shape. I didn't even check the oil. I just, I just bought it. Oil looks good. Nice. And clean. Um, looks like we've under oiled. Nice. <laughs> oh boy. That's not, that is not from the engine. That is definitely under oiling. Somebody took, uh, took, or the engine exploded. One of the two. Under oiled or exploded. So, let's see. Um, run, choke. <laughs> Okay, so cleaned it off or opened it up, just blew it clean. But honestly, it's in pretty good shape. Um, the uh, brushes there aren't worn, like the commutator bars here, they're not all worn. Um, nothing looks burnt or it wasn't even really dusty to blow off. So um, I'm gonna look visually, like I think that's a capacitor. That's all corroded, that's probably not good. But I don't see anything burnt or obvious. So, um, before we get into it too deep, I gotta run to VNR and get some welding cables. So I actually try it out. We just have, uh, I don't have any cables big enough, so I gotta run there anyway to get some hoses. And then uh, we'll try it out. Here we go. Okay, so VNR didn't have any cables for me. Uh, they're gonna get some for me for the morning, but I can't wait. 
So I took a negative battery cable off of the Kenworth and I had this thing kicking around that should work just to see if we can make some sparks. Now, I don't really know what I'm doing. If it wasn't running, I could just clean the carburetor, change the fuel, put some spark plugs in it and it'll probably fire right up. Um, the wiring is, is a little bit different, but I can tell if some toggle switches aren't working or if the, uh, the rheostat or whatever isn't working. Um, we need some different ohm readings between the terminals there and I can see if this circuit board is burnt um, but beyond that I don't really know so first we'll verify that the welder isn't working and then if it doesn't work then and I can't figure it out then uh, my welding supplier they rent out these machines and I'm sure that they fix them too it'd be neat to see if there's a kit that you can buy to replace like, the brushes and um, wear points on this so that it's optimal change the oil change the spark plugs, get it all ready, pull the dents, clean up the tin a little bit, and we got a nice optimal running machine. But first, let's just verify that it's not working. So, as it was winding down, it lit up. Did you see that? Oh, I saw that. Something going on there. Oh, so, now what? <laughs> <laughs> no sweet glue. Alright, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna start by pulling those brushes off. Maybe because the vibrations are different, the brushes aren't working. Right. So just these two bolts, and then we'll take the brushes off, make sure that they slide in and out nice and easy. Oh they're both they both got tension on it, so that's good. There's a lot of grease on there though. Take a good look at those bars. Okay, so trace the wires uh, from the dial in the front to these bottom three and then check the resistance between the wires and as you turn the dial between these two wires the resistance changes and between this one and those two the resistance changes all the way from zero to 10 ohms so I think that switch is working um, as best as I know carry on That's doing something. Okay, that switch is working. Same way for these four uh, wires. I just make sure that um, I trace them back to the plug and then turn the knob and each position should connect one wire to another wire. Okay, so that switch is working. Confirm that that one's working, that one's working, that one's working, and this one is working. So, that's about the extent of my knowledge. 
Now we have to ask some questions. And I will call my welding supply store tomorrow. That's working now. Okay, well we unplugged everything and plugged everything back in again. Let's we'll see if that did anything. What's up, pooch? Okay, so the only one, the only wire I didn't check is this squiggly wired one. See that squiggly one? And then I started looking and it looks like there's a fuse here connected from the wire that comes out of the windings to the terminal that goes here. And what this squiggly wire goes on either side of that. And that, they must have shorted it or something. And I'm wondering if that's a fuse and that the fuse is popped. So I'll pull that off and uh, see if something's up with that. Here we go. Right, puppy? Yeah, he's a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah, you're such a good girl. You guys have taken my terminal off on the bottom there. If you can see that. They must have shorted it out at some point. So hopefully that just popped the fuse. They were laughing because when I checked my continuity or check the resistance across the terminals I get an open and that is exciting I did not know that there was a fuse there I bet you did and the whole time you're watching this video is like check the fuse check the fuse here we go so unfortunately no such luck she's a reading okay Dang, that would have been a nice fix. But I guess that's not it. Hmm. <laughs> Shit. Now what? I guess I can pop that back on again. What's up, puppy? Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> okay, so I checked the continuity on this plate from here to here. And that's zero, but then I checked, while it was on there, I checked the continuity between here and here on the terminals. And I was getting nothing so i'm wondering if these two sensors tell the computer that this is blown and these are so rusty that they're not making good contact and it's telling the computer not to do something in there to give that thing power so i'm going to clean these all up wire wheel this all nice and clean make sure i got good contacts put it all back together again and go from there okay so polish the plate up New bolts, put new ends on it, and now when I touch this, it reads zero. That's much better than OFL. Oh, so bolt that back up again, and try it again. So unfortunately that wire did not fix the issues and I had to keep moving on to other projects. Having checked everything obvious and suspecting the computer, I didn't want to misdiagnose it so I sent it to my welding shop to get looked at. There are pretty complicated ways to test the windings and stators but at this point I had to leave it up to the professionals to get their opinion before wasting any more time and money. Alright, so we're going to bring the welder over to get looked at. We got a little trailer from VNR. Way back we were going to turn this into something, but it was the wrong size. So I just kind of kept it around and used it to move the trip, pick up trick boxes and stuff around. It's got a flat tire, so we'll throw one on from Princess Auto. We've got a whole pile of trailer equipment stuff there, so I don't think we need lights. Um, because it's such a small trailer, even though this one is bigger, it had a bigger welder on it than this. So maybe we can incorporate some, um, uh, cable holders and stuff on the back. So we'll, we'll swap tire. Uh, I'm not gonna paint this thing right now. It's, uh, I'd rather do that outside, it's too cold right now. I uh, just wanna get that thing working first, so here we go.
Okay, so I got the welder back, and I'm not exactly sure what they were talking about. So, it wasn't working, brought it out, and they said, uh, there's two computers on this thing, and there's no way to test the computers. Because it's a slightly older unit, they didn't have any of the same units there. Otherwise, like any good mechanic, you just take the working pieces off of one machine, put it on the broken machine, and see if it fixes the problem. But... Uh, we did not have that luxury and neither did they. So they said there's two computers and they can't tell if either one of the computers are working. The first one was definitely broken, they said, um, but uh, that was $1,500 total to f diagnose and fix that one, replace it. But if that one's broken, you can't tell if the other computer's working until the first one's working. So they said it could be $1,500, could be $3,000 to fix this thing. Luckily we got away with it and only had to replace the one computer, which is this little guy right here. Uh, I've got part number G5507-4K6, um, if that helps anybody. So it was generating, but it wasn't welding. I don't know where that other computer is, because that is the only one that I see. So um, I asked if they could if I could videotape the diagnosing process, but they said it was proprietary to Lincoln and they are not allowed to share how they fix their stuff. I, I thought it was red, not green. So to make sure that it is welding, we went straight to the soccer park and helped out Andy, who runs the entire soccer park in Dunville and welded a bunch of youth soccer nets together. It worked really, really well. So now we can invest some time into making a proper cart for it. Because this is an old welding cabinet that I bought my other Ranger 9 off of, which went with my service truck. And it's, uh, it would have been a bottle here. And I don't know where the Ranger 9 went, but anyway, not in there. But I got some hooks and stuff out here for cables and stuff already. Shelving, handle, so a few tacks um, just on the corners. And this cabinet will come off, and then I'll build a new base for it. So, yeah, it'll be easy, it'll be fine. Shouldn't be a problem, there's no welds on the, oh yeah, there it is. Hey, it, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, here we go. This was an old uh, frame that held Coyote tractors in place and then I modified it to hold up my GTO body while I worked on it, but now time to cut it up and turn it into a welder's frame. mounted on the frame I got the box on the back now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna do this mount now if I pull up on this um, it actually tilts up quite a bit so I need to move it um, I think the hinge point that I need to pick up the cabinet from is here because it's still a bit um, front heavy right now well so I gotta compensate for the weight of the tongue and then the cables are all going to be in the back too but basically i'm going to build a frame that goes from here kind of follows the contour down and then a bar a support bar across and then uh, another bar down so i can pick up the whole unit with the cabinet and everything put it in the back of the truck or um, this bar has to be behind this hinge point so if i need to pull the welder out i just take the two bolts out at the bottom and i can slide it out the front so this will all be open on the front here. Um, I think that'll look pretty slick. So, um, yeah, just a little bit of thinking and figuring out what I'm gonna do and then do it.
Okay, so I'm running out of steel, but essentially you're gonna run a, a brace from the bottom up to here so that we're not just yanking on this one part when we lift it up. But right now, my pivot point is right behind and I'm fairly heavy on the front yet. So I can move it and it'll be, it'll be better um, when I have the cables and the fuel tank in the back. But I'm thinking this is a pretty good spot and I can still open this all the way to uh, service what I need to service. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna take a chance and weld it up and then we'll splash some paint on. Okay, so that's all welded together, nice and solid. Um, I don't have steel for in between here that matches and it looks off, but all that I'm doing is trying to lift up on that. So I might just drill uh, an eye bolt through it and just stick a cable on it and tension the cable off the eye bolt. And when I pull, it'll be pulling off the bottom and off the top. So nothing's gonna break, but I'm not too worried. It's not super heavy. Got an old Cummins uh, hanger to pull it up on. I'm gonna lift up on a Cummins that's 1,500 pounds. I'm sure this will be fine. Um, and now we'll take it outside, pressure wash it. I'm not gonna get too worried with um, uh, pulling dents and stuff. I'm just gonna splash some paint on the the bent up pieces are going to be matte black and then the smooth pieces will be gloss black. I think it'll look pretty sharp. We'll pressure wash everything first and then we're good to go. Oh, grow up, kitty. Hey. Right. We're gonna hit this with the old death wheel. You know, it's time to replace these when you have more than 17 of these things sticking out of your shirt. But uh, luckily the noise scares the cat. So uh, she won't be near enough to worry about little pieces of steel sticking out of her fur. So uh, we'll hit it with the wire wheel, knock off the uh, um, last of the rust and loose paint. I'm gonna put some PPE on for this. I always wear sound protection. Um, I'm sketchy with glasses, but you definitely wanna wear some safety glasses for those. Here we go. This is the paint she told you not to worry about. Excited to try this out. This is Trim Cloud's new uh, turbo can. It has a massive spray nozzle, just like 10 inches at a time. Make quick, quick work of that. This is your primer and your paint all in one. You can make a quick job of this. Um, the only issue I had was I was using the can on the top and when I tilted it too far straight it would quit because I had I used half the can already so I had to tilt it down a bit and that put more paint on one side than the other you want to keep your fan nice and even so I have I have more paint here you got a little run here um, but the sides look really good I'm happy with that um, and then the small can worked really good for the end here. So now uh, we got this gloss black and throw that on our matte black trailer and uh, It's good to go not bad for prepping something in under five minutes and only one soul lost their life today But uh, that's one less soul that's going to uh, bite one of my daughters So there you go 
Bye bye. Okay, there she is. Everything on there. Um, got my helmet, flapper disc, the cords hanging up, gas. So now, next question to see if this will lift it and if it's sort of centered. If it's not, if it tips towards the back, or sorry, the back tips down, then I put more fuel in the front. And if it tips to the front then I gotta put more jerry cans in the back. It's science. You could measure and trial and error but you could just fake it for YouTube and say it's perfect. But regardless let's lift it up and see where we're at. <laughs> I think this is like half full and there's nothing in that jerry can because there's never any gas in my on my property. I always seem to disappear to mama's car or lawnmower or pressure washer. I never seem to have it but anyway. What color should I paint those rims. I'm thinking like a charcoal grenade. Um, but I think that looks pretty sick actually. I'll take some shots inside where it's not, it's, the light's better. Here we go. Okay, so that's not balanced as well as I'd like, but I don't need to put cables in between and I think I have a solution without doing anything where it will be perfect. Never mind, that's worse. I gotta go farther back, but I can't go farther back because um, then I can't open my lid. So, that's pretty good. That's not bad. I'll keep it where it is. I think one hook on the cabinet and we'll put the chain towards the back and then I think it'll be golden. perfect is that? Sometimes you can engineer it until you're blue in the face or you just trial and error and weld another hook on there and make make something out of nothing. I don't know. It, it works. I'm happy. It, uh, we'll throw her in the back of the F-350. We got a nice welding rig. Okay, so designing this cart, I wanted two things. To have a balance while it was on the cart so I could move it around easily without a forklift or a tractor, and to have it balanced nice and evenly when I'm taking it off the cart to be able to put it in the back of a truck. good back there but it's really hard to get the cables and stuff out of there. Guess we're gonna have to build a welding truck because we got a big truck, small truck, lifted truck, truck that goes up and down, we got fast truck, we got slow truck. I guess we need a welding truck. <laughs> Maybe an old Fargo or something with a flatbed? Maybe. Okay so we're gonna stop it there. Um, if you want me to see me actually use this you gotta follow the low boy build on this channel um, where I'll be welding 200 feet, 25, 50, no 100 feet of uh, plate on the bottom of the trailer. But super happy with how that turned out, super happy that um, we stayed within budget and that I got a decent welder out of the deal. Now um, between putting the cage together I still got a few things to do, I got to weld that or I have to paint that hook yet. Um, and I have to make mounts to attach it to the trailer. Um, but we're gonna start editing this video, so we're gonna stop it here. 
could do a better job um, and somebody really smart told me before the difference between a good job and a great job is generally about an hour but um, I'm staying within my time budget and my cost budget to getting this welder going got to keep moving on to other projects it's the end of the day I'm happy um, so uh, yeah we're gonna unload it again bolt it back onto the trailer and then uh, start getting on that low boy because the longer it sits outside the rustier it gets without uh, full paint on it so thanks for watching guys um, definitely comment down below if I did something wrong or um, you have comments on how to fix the welder or whatever um, share your stories we'd love to hear them and uh, that's why we put these videos out there can't always win and get something for cheap and fix it with five dollar part i know there's lots of videos out there but sometimes you just have to pay somebody who actually knows what they're doing and has the parts um, to uh, do it for you um, that being said i think the welder is the first thing i ever brought anywhere to get fixed so um, anyway thanks guys remember if you're not filthy you're not rich get out there and work on it here we go